The continent of Van Dyke, after, uh, after centuries of conflict between the three major powers of the region, things have finally slowed down into what can be called a relative peace. The Republic of Minatoy, a nation of scholarship and art, home to the mages and the center of a technological revolution. The Empire of Righeit, the continent's main producers of bread and milk, and a large and formidable military force. And the Alliance of Megiga, the continent's religious center, host to important spiritual sites relating to the worship of the three pillars, Erethus, Eon, and Coleron. These, these three nations live now in relative harmony. However, in the background, rumors of a sinister uprising are being spread throughout the continent. This, however, does not concern you, for you are merely a simple adventurer traveling to Van Dyke uh, from a distant continent, ready to make a new life for you and your loved ones. You start in the ship of the Marianne on your last day of your voyage to this great continent. Aboard the ship. Onto the new continent, this King Nordov, the useless half-elf bard, Amnesia Dan, the 5 IQ paladin, and Harlot Cordeson, the prostitute MVP. The pilot, Count Chesapeake, called everyone onto the main lobby, including Elliot, the asshole who wouldn't let people throw his stepniece, and a little girl named Mason, who has a pretty amulet. After everyone has gathered in the lobby, a pirate galleon slams itself onto the ship and initiates a battle. Dan notices there's a lady pirate on there, who tries to seduce her immediately. He fails miserably and forces Harlot to do it. Do it indeed, and while Mason is watching intently. The enemy mage burns down and Kane heals 3 HP. Harlot and Carrie finish up and Harlot teaches Mason how to use a dagger and sex jokes, while Dan and Captain Chesapeake struggle fending off the pirates while Elliot and Kane are almost dead. Harlot walks out, majestically lifts her bow, and does a critical hit to the mage and the rest of his battle is practically over. We threw the pirates' corpses overboard and made a new ally, Carrie. Everyone gets drunk, Mason hands over the amulet to Kane, and I get to know Carrie a little more. The next morning, Dan swims at 500 miles an hour to get the mage's robe we threw overboard last night and kinda survives. We step off onto the new continent. After stepping off, we went to the weapon shop and noticed a small dwarf man surrounded by thugs. We killed one of them and big as thick as this dwarf fighter joins our party. Carrie helps rip out the thug's spine and I ask the forger to make a spine grip. After rightfully wanting to report me, Harlot seduced him in an exchange of... I got my whip. Just moments after meeting, Dickus and Dan are talking about burying a man they just killed and eating his kidneys. We decided to burn him. Kane wants to repent, but this priest is racist, so Dan got, got revenge by... After that instant, the party goes into the tavern and notices a wanted poster for a guy who is merely related to the disappearance of some girl. Harlot's insatiable lust kicks in and... The lady bartender while Carrie sighs. The rest hang out and Kane wants to bang this crazy old man who ends up giving a map to the town. After resting, they go to a half-elvish cult which is a lead to the guy in the wanted poster. Brian, the cult leader, tells the party the wanted guy is good and he's in the catacombs. After 30 minutes of some dumb puzzle, we enter the catacombs which is a dark hallway with five doors. We go into one, a giant flying bath with a magical elf zombie abomination grotesquely climbs out the bat's insides. After nerfing his elf for 40 minutes, we rest next to the burning bat's body. We walk out of the catacombs and go back to the forgery. Harlot attacks the owner with a new spine whip and immediately heals him. Kane threatens to burn down the shop and he runs away. While Kane was threatening him, his amulet glowed a bright red. He followed him and find a secret workshop filled with weaponry. Dan steals a few knives, Kane gets a free bow, Harlot spares him by only getting 50 gold instead of 300 gold. He messed around with the amulet and realized that it boosts only elf magic, meaning only Kane uses it. We plan to fish on the shore, but a guard approaches us. Dan greets him happily and asks about the church that he burned down. The guard accepts him into the investigation team so he can lead them into a wild goose chase later on. The party go back to the cult and tell Brian about the monster they had found in the catacombs, and he decides to follow the party back to the catacombs. On the way, they meet a tiefling with horns and a tail who was wandering around. The only two things it said as an introduction was that its name was Rowan and she was gay. 
Kane sexually harasses Rowan, and she joins the party. Harlot and Carrie sat this one out, unfortunately. I assume they bonded together, being in lesbians with each other, and uh, making my channel demonetized. They continue into the catacombs and find a magical circle under the giant zombie bath thing. Kane inspects it, and his amulet starts glowing. He sees a vision of a golem. They open another door with a boiling cauldron. Kane and Dan immediately drink the concoction. They open another door and find a giant golem made out of flesh. They burn it alive and Dickus almost dies. They find the captured maiden Belle and retreat for the day.